As Dunaway mentioned last night, he's you know there in Phoenix. All the ESPN people are around there. And when the story breaks late, I had gone to bed, frankly. I did not find out about this till this morning. I found out about it in the middle of the night because a buddy had sent me a text, you know, with the wide eye emoji. Yeah. yeah. And so I looked at it, and I, it was one of those things I couldn't go back to bed without processing it for a little bit. And I was like, I actually think this is a genius move. Yeah. So I woke up to this news this morning, Dunaway, but you saw the ESPN guys pulled out of parties doing hits. And all of them, when asked for their top candidates, say uh, Nate Oates in the sentence with some other guys, Scott Drew, Mark Few. I mean, you could list a lot of guys, but Nate Oates uh, is in all of those sentences when the the – Jeff Goodman's and Pete Thamel's and whoever covers basketball starts to make those lists. Uh, he is, um, um, and that's a compliment. And you know, Nate Oates is a Final Four coach now, and his style of basketball. If you'll notice, Calipari sort of shifted to more threes this year. Um, and, and you know, there's a there's a trend in basketball that is you know shifting to the NBA style. It, it happens in college and. In, in college football, and it's happening now where you see the way Nate Oates likes to play, and he's not the only one. A lot of coaches play this way. It's the NBA style. Either you're getting it at the rim or you're shooting threes. At the rim, shooting threes. You know, Golden State and the Splash Brothers really got that going back in the day. Um, and it's a very NBA style. Cal shifted a little bit to that this year, a little bit more than he has in the past. And um, I, think it's, I think it's the style of the future, and I think that's one reason why Nate Oates – and his analytics is on the list. But I'll ask you guys. Um, Nate Oates has given no indication so far about any any desire to leave Tuscaloosa. Uh, but this one, this is a different job than any other job that's been open yet, right? Well, I, and I know what you meant when you said that. I would say actually he has done away because he's agreed to very large buyouts, which is an indication he's comfortable in Tuscaloosa, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, and I, 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 I know no what you were saying. About yeah. leaving. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Uh, but – $18 million buyout's a significant buyout. And everybody's going to sit here and say, oh, this is Kentucky. They can throw $18 million at it. I don't think anybody's ever done that. I think that no. would be the record for a buyout. I, I think the buyout might turn everyone off. But if Kentucky really believes Nate Oates is their guy, and this is the guy that can get them back to what you saw in the first six years of John Calipari in Kentucky, then I think it would be well worth the money. And I think if you're Nate Oates, I think ultimately he stays. But if you're Nate Oates, you at least got to listen to this. I mean, this is the, the greatest job probably in college basketball history. Um, so there's a lot of ways we can attack this, Dunaway. Let's, let's start with $18 million is a significant buyout. I think, and I've done a little research on this today, I think the largest buyout that anybody is eminently aware of, oddly enough, ironically enough, is the $12 million Alabama just paid to Washington to get Kalen DeBoer. Um that, wow. So that just shows you it's one of the myths in college sports that I was guilty of until people started educating us on this, that schools are just willing to pay any amount of buyout to get a coach. Really, they're not. I mean, very rarely do schools pay large buyouts to get a coach. And $18 million would be, by, by the homework I've done, by far and away a record. Um, and then they'd have to turn around and pay him more than Alabama's going to pay him. Yep. He's a top five, top five coach. His daughter is in school in Tuscaloosa. His other daughter is, is um, you know, on her way to maybe enrolling at Alabama as well. That's a big factor. And who was it? Somebody on our show or was it in a, I, 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 the last two weeks have been such a blur to me. Uh, so I don't know. Um, but somebody told me about his love for the lake. Lake Tuscaloosa. Was it Coach Hot? Was it was it Hodgson? Hodgson? I don't. The I, don't other day? I, I don't remember. I don't that. remember it coming up. But I, I could. I could have yeah. just missed that. Yeah. Somebody has told me along the way just how much he loves being on the lake. And it may have been on the air in an interview, but he, he loves his time at Lake Tuscaloosa. I think it was Coach Hodgson uh, on the fact that he gets out there and he's surfing behind his boat and he's still surfing after sunset. Like it's dark and he's still out there. Wow. I lived in Lexington, Kentucky. It's a great place. It does not have a great lake close by. <laughs> so if I'm, if I'm pitching Nate Oates today, man, if you love the lake. You got to stay in Tuscaloosa. It's it's Kentucky with a lake. <laughs> well, I mean, if I'm Nate Oates, you've already done. We've already we've already classified him or categorized him as the greatest coach in Alabama hoops history. You still have an opportunity to do more things that nobody's ever done. I mean, if you go to Kentucky, the expectation is you win a national championship and you fall in a long line of guys that have done it. I mean, how many? So 
Rub did it, right? Yep. Um, you did ha- Joe B win one? I think Joe, Joe B, B won, won one. one. Yep. yep. Uh, uh, Tubby won one. Yep. Patino won one. Calipari won one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's almost easier to count the guys that haven't won one, Dunaway. Um, yeah. now, uh, now do the ones that won two. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. It, 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 I, I, you're you're at Rupp, right? I mean, Rupp's the only one I think yeah. that's won multiple there. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, anyway, I, so. I mean, he uh, would just my, my, my point to that being my point to that being you can win a national championship and still leave. Sometimes pushed out. Tubby was pushed out. Uh, Joe B. Hall was pushed out. I mean, he's the guy to follow Rupp, and he was pushed out. Uh, he was he was the guy Rupp chose, and he was pushed out. Uh, it's a uh, it's a it's one of those jobs where you can go and get fired from. I don't see a scenario where Nate Oates gets fired ever from Alabama, ever. Oh, yeah, and, yeah, and look, I mean, you go to Kentucky. It's the expectation is you win a national championship, and if you don't, you're an absolute failure. Yeah, I, I want to ask you a question about this, don't we? First, I need to remind people that the Indy Grand Prix of Alabama is returning. Uh, the Indy 500, the road to the Indy 500, April 26th through the 28th. Fastest drivers in the world there. Country music superstar Riley Green's your grand marshal. He'll say the most famous words in sports. Start your engines. The Medical Properties Trust presents the Children's of Alabama Indy Grand Prix, powered by M First at the Barber Motorsports Park. Tickets are selling fast. So get yours now. In the chat room, Dunaway, and you live this, okay? You lived it because, and this affects anybody, Nate Oates, Scott Drew, Mark Few, anybody that you want to throw out here. Royal Payne says Kentucky fans treat basketball losses like football losses, which is exhausting for the coach. You lived it. Did you? Was that your experience with Rick Pitino there in the 90s that one loss in December is treated like Alabama would treat a, a football loss in October? Um, truthfully, when I was there, it was the, uh, the two probation years of Rick Pitino. Uh, but that first year they were expecting to lose a lot and they did. And then it was, it was Patino's Bombinos the next year where they won the sec, but was not eligible for the NCAA tournament, but they are, and, and this is a compliment or Royal pain can take it as an insult, but they are the Alabama football fans of basketball. They expect to win every game. They expect to win national championships every year. They expect to be the best team in the SEC. They they consider themselves basketball royalty, just like Alabama fans consider themselves football royalty. They they are identical fan bases. And yes, they can be exhausting, just like I'm sure Nick Saban would probably tell you if he's being honest. My goodness, we won all these championships here, and we lose a game, and you guys still go crazy. It, it's, it, it, I, I worked in two places my whole career, and the similarities between the Kentucky basketball fans and the Alabama football fans, to me, I cannot separate the two. They are identical fan base. Well, you know, in going Alabama from 93 to 2009, not winning a national championship, it seemed like an eternity. A long 2012 was a long time ago. Yeah. The last time Kentucky won one of these things. Yeah, I I mean it's it's it takes a special guy to be the Alabama football coach, obviously, and we'll see if that special guy is Kalen DeBoer. Time will tell. Nick Saban was that special guy. It takes a special guy to be the Kentucky basketball coach. I mean, you saw Billy Gillespie. Boy, you want to talk about square peg round hole? That guy was not fit to be the Kentucky basketball coach, and I think you could tell pretty quickly with him. Um, yeah, well, and, let, and that's why fit is so important, Brownie. I would tell you, like, Scott Drew, good name to me to, to take the Kentucky job because Baylor, you know, right now they don't have a home in the Big Ten and the SEC, and if you don't have a Big Ten or SEC home right now for football, I don't know what your what your future is in college athletics. Those are the only secure places right now. I feel like Baylor will be fine as we move into the future, but you don't know that. Uh, but everyone tells me Scott Drew's too – I don't know Scott Drew. Uh, and I don't know how he runs his program, but everybody tells me Scott Drew's too clean to be the Kentucky basketball coach. He runs things. He's too too nice of a guy. He's too clean. He runs too clean of a program to be at Kentucky. Um, I don't know about Mark Few. To me, Gonzaga's future in the in in the, in the future of college athletics. To me, Mark Few's a heck of a basketball coach. Um, I would jump if I'm Mark Few. I know where my legacy is at Gonzaga, but I don't know what the future. I would I would pack that leg- legacy up and I would move to Kentucky. Nate Oates is still a young guy, and he he may not be at Alabama the rest of his career. I would understand it 100% if he went to Kentucky or Michigan State or, or North Carolina or Duke someday. Um, but Kentucky's a different job. Um, I think it's I think it's the most difficult job in basketball. Hey, and and I'm, I'm running through my head right now. I think it's the most 
difficult job in basketball because of the expectation. More than Carolina, more than Duke. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you on that. And the name I haven't heard you say is Dan Hurley. I know he's coaching tonight, but – you know, if if I'm Kentucky, I make uh, no a doubt. run at the guy. No doubt, I make the call. Uh, like I think he's just I, I brash, what, I, he's brash enough. He's like Calipari. He's brash enough to deal with that fan base. Done away. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't say it because I didn't want you guys to think I was stupid. But I thought <laughs> it before the show started. I was like, Dan Hurley's at UConn, and I was talking to these guys uh, yesterday. These big UConn boosters, and they're like, every year we fall thirty million dollars behind everyone else in college athletics. And people like us are having to make up the difference in $30 million a year. Making up the difference is hard to do. And I, I was just, I was like, well, UConn is sort of a blue, a modern day blue blood basketball program. I didn't want to be the idiot that said, why not Hurley leaving UConn to go to Kentucky? If I'm Kentucky, that is a proven product. I mean, that was a home run hire to me. I would, I would take Hurley over Drew. Mark Few, Nate Oates, I'd take Hurley over anybody. I just didn't want to be the guy to say it because I thought you guys would go. Oh, no, I mean, I can't, even, UConn. I can't even imagine. You know, we've been on a facility tour over the last six weeks, both in Tuscaloosa and Auburn. We saw how incredible their facilities are, and I just find it hard to believe if you went to Stores, Connecticut, that you've got great facilities and that you've great, got a great NIL behind you, and he would have absolutely – I mean, it would be fitting. You win back-to-back national championships, sayonara, you're out – and you go to Lexington. I, I, I mean, I wouldn't blame him. Yeah.